Okay, so let's do a quick overview of ovarian torsion. Ovarian torsion occurs when the ovary spins or rotates on its axis, cutting off blood supply to the ovary. When the ovarian torsion occurs, it usually occurs along with torsion of the fallopian tube, which is referred to as an adnexal torsion. Now the ovary has a dual blood supply from the ovarian and the uterine arteries. Given the dual blood supply, when there is torsion, venous flow is usually the first to go. So in an early acute torsion, you may have arterial blood supply or arterial color flow, but lack venous blood flow. This lack of venous outflow leads to congestion and edema of the ovary, which then leads to reduced arterial blood supply. The main risk factor for developing ovarian torsion is a cyst or mass that measures larger than 5 centimeters. Pregnancy is another risk factor for torsion. And you could also develop ovarian torsion in an ovary without a cyst or mass, especially in the pediatric population. Patients often present with lower abdominal pain that can vary in severity. Nausea and vomiting are also very common, occurring in 70% of cases. And in later stages, fever can develop as the ovary becomes necrotic. Here we got the normal right ovary, and then that's the left ovary. See the left ovary is enlarged. Stromal echogenicity is increased when compared to the right. You'll notice a trace amount of free fluid. This is the uterus right here. On top of the increased echogenicity of the ovary, you're going to have a heterogeneous echo texture to the ovarian stroma as well. If you pay close attention, you can see there's some adnexal torsion right there, so some volvulus. So here's a pelvic using the 6 megahertz curvilinear transducer. Here you got the bladder, and we're in the right adnexa. Here's a large cystic structure in the right adnexa, which is of the right ovary. No ovarian tissue can be seen. Here's in transverse. Here's your uterus right here, bladder. Small left ovary, large right ovary with cyst. And then here you can see this circular structure. That's a better view, showing the, the bullseye or target like lesion. With colored Doppler, you're going to have some circumferential flow, which is a whirlpool sign. So given the large size of the cyst, the volvulus that's seen at this area right here, and the whirlpool sign, this is a case of ovarian torsion. So there you can see the flow, and then you can see the, the spinning or twirling right there, which is the volvulus of the adnexa. Here we have another example of an ovarian cyst causing torsion. Here's a clip going through the ovary. You can see the ovary is very heterogeneous, and the cyst is pretty large, not captured in this entire clip. You can see quite clearly that with colored Doppler, there is no internal flow to the cyst whatsoever. Sweeping in sagittal from right to left, you can see how large the cyst is in comparison to the bladder that's to the right of it. Here's the cyst, here's the bladder, and here's the uterus. Here's another example showing how echogenic and heterogeneous the ovary is along with the cyst. No color flow. Also no spectral flow. And here's a dual screen showing the measurement. The largest being 14.4 centimeters. And here's a panoramic view. Here's another example of an ovarian torsion. This one caused by a large ovarian mass which turned out to be a dermoid or teratoma. Now here's a clip going through the lesion. You can see there's a bit of ovary right here. This is the dermoid. And here you can see the volvulus and the adnexa. That's where the twisting is. That's where the torsion happens. And here's the same image with some labeling. Here in purple you can see the ovary with little follicles. This is the dermoid. This is the muscle, rectus abdominis, and the subcutaneous adipose tissue. And here's the color still at the volvulus and the adnexa with the whirlpool sign, the classic whirlpool sign. To recap, an ovary much larger than the opposite ovary, so a ratio greater than 2.5. Whether there's a mass or not, more common with a mass greater than five centimeters, cyst or mass. Echogenic and heterogeneous ovarian stroma. Free fluid can be mild, moderate, severe, and also an adnexal volvulus is a good thing to see. You can't always see that, so I hope this helps.